Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore, and welcome to this latest edition of the Perry Report. We are now joined by Leonce Dikumana. He's a professor of economics at the University of Massachusetts Amherst and the director of the African Policy Program at Perry, which is where he joins us from. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. So, um, Leonce, can you tell us about Africa Euphoria? What is it? Thank you very much. Yes, Africa Euphoria. Um, I think in the media we have been, uh, we had been for, uh, for decades been used to negative news about Africa, Africa the lost, uh, the, the dark continent, Africa with the growth tragedies and all that. But I think now in the, since the past uh, few years, we have heard about Africa growing fast, even faster than the rest of the world, to the point now, now that people are even talking about Africa's growth euphoria in the sense that uh, growth, Africa is growing really fast, and um, some even claim that poverty is declining fast. They're talking about uh, Africa's middle class emerging. And uh, so that's where the concept of euphoria comes, comes from. But what is peculiar with it is that the, the euphoria is more among no, outside of Africa than in Africa. So uh, if you went to, the, to uh, any village in, in, in the continent, I'm, I'm not sure whether you will find many people talking about growth euphoria. If you went to the to capital cities in, in African countries where you find so many young people who are with degrees who are now struggling to find jobs, I don't think they would agree that there, would, there is growth euphoria. So my concern is that um, this kind of uh, presentation of Africa as uh, the fastest growing co continent uh, where poverty is, is, right, is, is declining fast, even though some of it is statistically correct that growth rates are higher than in, in other regions. My, my concern is that it may uh, uh, obscure and overshadow the basic development concerns that African, African uh, co countries are still facing, which is high growth rate, high, high poverty rate, stubbornly high inequality uh, in, many, in most of the countries, and uh, youth unemployment, which is growing really fast, poor and ineffective, in, 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 in inefficient infrastructure in many of the parts of the, of the, of the continent, especially the rural area. So uh, fundamentally, Africa needs a lot of progress in so many, so many dimensions that it will be really un, 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 uh, counterproductive to sit down and start celebrating uh, success because we still have lots of work to do. And can you talk about some of the organizations that are behind this, that are pushing this idea of Africa euphoria? And what do they, what do they attribute to this recent success? Yes, this is actually interesting to, to, to think and to, to sit and reflect about who is claiming credit for this, this euphoria. This, I'm drawing from a very interesting uh, presentation done by my friend uh, Tandika Amkanda, we were at uh, London School of Economics in a conference at, in, in Cape Town, where he was basically his, uh, going through the history about the growth in Africa and, and not, not now interrogating this uh, uh, Africa euphoria, who is now coming to claim the, the credit. Amazingly, you'll find that um, uh, donors, many donors are, are willing to, uh, are trying to convince the public that the growth resurgence in Africa, whatever they call it, is actually due to increased aid to Africa. The volume of, volumes of aid have, have increased in Africa. Therefore, this is one of the reasons why Africa is growing fast. Now, the reality is that aid is a small, small fraction of the resources that Africa would need. If I was, if, if, you, if you have to, you, you have to give credit to where it is. Yes, aid has helped Africa, but Africa will need much, much more aid for, uh, for it to sustain the, the growth rates. And then some, some people are even uh, trying to say that what we see as uh, high growth rates in African countries, improvement in, in, in macroeconomic fundamentals, is actually the result of the painful policies that we implemented in the 80s, which are referred to as social adjustment uh, poly, uh, programs, which, which produced basically no positive results, everybody would, would agree, including the, the, world, uh, the Bretton Woods uh, institutions from their own evaluation that these policies were poorly designed, poorly implemented, and did not produce uh, any, any result. But, so, but still, some people would want to, to believe that the, the current results, positive results in Africa, are the, are the, are the effects of 
uh, policies implemented 20, 20, 20 years. Now, if you are going to sell a policy to anybody, telling them that the results would come 20 years, 20 years, 25 years down the road, you will have a hard time convincing them to adopt the policy. Then um, there is a, a, the, the view that this growth resurgence is to some extent a south-south uh, issue that, uh, 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 that Africa is trading more and more with, the, with the, its southern partners, China, India, um, which is fueling the growth in, in the continent, especially with building infrastructure. Again, this is partly true. You have, you have, we have seen a rise in, the, in investment from China, now even more from, from India and Brazil, Korea. And this has helped to bridge the, 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 the financing gap, the infrastructure gap. But still, again, it, has, it is still not sufficient to meet the, the development needs of, of the continent. We need more of that, uh, more expansion of, the, of, of African markets to really reach higher and, and sustained growth rate. But one thing that is not said enough is the credit to African governments themselves. Because if you look around, visibly, capacity in African governments have, has increased. Capacity to, to design and implement policies. In fact, during, during the, 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 the economic crisis, we saw that African countries were very, were very good at intervening on time with the right policies to support domestic demand and so on. So, in fact, so if, if the analysis is well done, you must give credit also to African governments for having uh, learned to design better policies and intervene better during 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 crisis. So should we should we sit down and celebrate success? No, there is still a lot of uh, of, of things to be done in terms of tailoring policies to alleviating policy uh, alleviating poverty, increasing uh, employment. And one of the things that African countries need to do more is adopt and endorse a more flexible approach to, to economic policies and really move away from the the, uh, the, the policies of the 80s which were straight jacketed one size fit all which produced bad results so every country needs to adopt its own its own strategy that meets its own needs that have, that's built on its own capacity and endowment so that you have you can, you can build more competitive uh, economies more diversified diversified economies where the goals of policy, uh, macroeconomic policies, sectoral policies, are actually real development goals, not just nominal, uh, nominal goals. And of course, Africa is a continent with massive natural resources. So as you're saying, if just economic policies were put into place, there's no reason why this entire continent should not be prosperous. Exactly. I, I think you're right in saying that looking at the, the vast resources that African countries possess, there is no reason why they should not reach higher and sustained sustain growth. And, but one of the reasons is that they have not utilized these resources effectively. They have, in many times, signed bad, contract, bad deals in terms of exploitation and commercialization of, of, of these resources, where the profits go to the multinational corporations that are, that are exploiting those resources, and much less go, stays in the, in, the, in the continent. So one of the focuses of, of, of the policy going forward in, in African countries is to build more capacity to design natural resource exploitation and development uh, programs so that more, the benefits accrue mostly to, develop, to, to African countries. Leon Stikumana, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.